Welcome back to Colbert on Golf, presented by Midland Exteriors. I'm Kevin Keatsman, and in just a moment, we're going to hear from Jim Colbert and Lee Trevino, a couple of the greats of the game who have a long history together. You're probably waiting for the answer to that trivia question just before the break. The senior PGA this week at the Pete Dye course in French Lick, Indiana, is taking place. And I ask you, how did French Lick get its name? Well, the French were the first Europeans to settle in southern Indiana. They traded with the Native Americans who hunted buffalo. They quickly found out that the buffalo hang out down by the mineral springs where they would lick salt from the springs and the rocks and all the stuff down there. And they decided to rename the community French Lick after the buffalo that licked salt at the mineral springs in southern Indiana. So there you go. Should be a great tournament this week, the senior PGA. The regular tour is in Fort Worth for the Colonial and on the PGA Tour this week in 1994, it was Tom Lehman shooting 67, 67, 67 to beat Greg Norman by five shots at the Memorial Tournament. That was Greg Norman's defeat and Tom Lehman's first win on the PGA Tour back in 1994 in this week. But they'll play at the Colonial in Fort Worth. Gary Woodland not in the field this week. Robert Streb is in Fort Worth. All right, let's hear from Jim Colbert and his good friend Lee Trevino. They had a chance to speak recently. We got a chance to hear some great stories. Lee Trevino is one of the game's all-time great golfers and characters for sure. He won the U.S. Open, the British Open, and PGA Championship two times apiece, and he has a very long history with our good buddy Jim Colbert. Well, I mean, it was this golf game. It, you know, <laughs> it kind of run you down, but uh, I got a million stories. But the very first time I won was in Pensacola, Florida, and it was on a Tuesday. It was the first $100,000 tournament. We got rained out Sunday and Monday, and I got paired with Lee on Tuesday in the last group. And, you know, Lee talks a lot, and I talk a lot and sometimes, and uh, we're playing a little while, and he jabs the needle once or twice. And I said, Lee, you know, I've been doing that same thing my whole life. That doesn't work with me. He says, okay, bro. I think we became friends right after that. I can kind of remember that. He came up. Came up kind of the same way that I did, even though he was he played the, he played football and, and and what have you. But I'll tell you what, we go back to 1968. I don't know if Colbert's ever told you the story or not, but we got we were playing in Westchester, and we got actually teamed up with with believe it or not with Gene Sarazen. And at the time, Gene Sarazen was was you know he was I think in the 70s. And the one yeah. thing that he that he didn't do is back in the old days they played stymies, which means they didn't mark their ball on the green. And Colbert and I, uh, I think we shot 68 the first day, and the next second day we got rained out, and the third day we got rained out, and then and then we shot low again the next day, and, and Mr. Sheridan didn't make the cut. But the one thing about it is that he wouldn't mark his ball, and I'd look at Colbert, and Colbert would look at me, and I'd say, hell, I'm not going to tell him to mark it. He said, well, I'm not either. I said, well, then we got to go around it. And, but uh, he... He actually gave us a uh, a lot of encouragement, Mr. Sarazen did, and uh, and actually he actually was the one that that actually told the world. He said, "Let me tell you something." He said, "I played with a couple of young guys today," and he says, uh, "He said uh, I uh, I watched them, and he says they're going to have to make room for him." He said, "These two guys can play," and um, thank God he was right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had, yeah, we played a lot of golf. I remember the last day, so we were so competitive. And uh, we didn't win, but we both finished in the top five. 16's a par three and 17's a par four there in Westchester. And Lee's going up 17, and I'm walking down 16. And, I mean, you'd never see that today. But Lee hollers, Comer, Comer, across the fairway. Yeah. How do you stand? How do you stand? I said, well, I'm nine under. He says, I've got you by one. I'm ten. <laughs> yeah, I heard everything. Didn't have yeah, the, now that, that was the good days when we used to go out and play, and we'd have a conversation for four hours when we played golf. Today, these golfers, I think they they kind of acknowledge each other on the first tee, then uh, and then say uh, nice round or, or nice playing with you when they finish on eighteen. It's kind of a different thing now. They're playing for a hell of a lot of more money than we did, so. I think we enjoyed it more uh, than they did. Yeah, I really do. All well, right, we traveled. We traveled differently. You know, there was more camaraderie in the travel in the hotels uh, before all the private jets. Yeah, that probably is the case. We were talking Lee last segment about Matt Kuchar winning last week at the Heritage yeah. and holing out yeah. on the last hole. Yeah. I guess I'll ask each of you, you. You know, you have a dramatic shot or two from your careers that you most remember to to win a tournament, kind of like I, Matt Kuchar I, did. 
I, uh, you know what, I, I don't really ever remember doing something crazy um, uh, like that uh, to win the tournament. I, I actually, uh, actually two putted. I, I can't even ever remember. You know, I, I birdied a couple of times in playoffs. I'd birdie a hole if, if it went extra distance, and I remember that. But uh, yeah, not, not like he did. I mean, I mean, when when you three putt from four feet. Your odds of birding 18 or zilch. You understand what I'm telling you? I mean, and, and it, it was unbelievable. But he hit a pretty damn good second shot in there. He didn't, he, he didn't stray away from that flag. It was against the wind. He was hitting five iron and, uh, and put it in the bunker and, but, but hit a hell of a bunker shot. You know, I don't know if, if he, if, if that ball went in that hole pretty fast. Uh, he probably would have gone by six to eight feet and it's questionable whether he would have made that coming back after what back to the way he put it on 17. Yeah, that's career changing Lee, but what about your chip in against Jacqueline in the British Open? That was pretty dramatic. Well, that was, you know, what happened to, to I chipped in. That was a hot chip in. I wasn't even trying. Uh, I, <laughs> I got my chili got hot on the tee with the cameraman and they kept going in front of me and I, I got out of my rhythm and I put it in the bunker and had to go backwards out of the bunker and then I I actually was lying three there where he was lying two. And I chipped first, and I chipped it 20 feet by. And he relaxed so much that he left his chip 20 feet short. Well, when I chipped by, uh, he says, go ahead, and you want to come up, come on down up. So I just walked up on the hill, pulled out a nine iron, and hit the ball, and it went in the hole. And it shook him up so bad he three-putted, and then he bogeyed 18. And it didn't even finish second. You know, Jack clipped him for second place. Well, Colbert and Turvino obviously have a ton of fun competing together, but here's the problem. I know Jim pretty well, but Lee Trevino knows him even better, and he says if you're going to play Colbert on the golf course, don't let him pencil whip you. First of all, you have to understand that when you have a handicap of six, you have to turn 20 scores in, and they take your best 10. Then they only give you 80%. So all of a sudden they're giving you... They're giving you a six handicap when you should really be a ten. And then Colbert Wait, walks enough. up. That Colbert walks call. up, and Colbert says, "I'm zero. He's not a zero. He's a minus four. <laughs> Lee, so now, gotta... so now, not only have you taken the worst of it on your side, <laughs> you got the worst on the other side. You're better off just paying off and getting the hell out of town. <laughs> Colbert, your response, Lee, gotta... sir. Lee, just don't say that. that that's so out of line, Lee. That's just <laughs> <not right. laughs> There's Colbert and Trevino talking about how they work handicaps when they play amateurs. I should know. I've been there before. Colbert on Golf continues, presented by Midland Exper- Exteriors. We're back with more right after this. You're listening to Colbert on Golf, built by Midland Exteriors, online at midlandexteriors.com. Midland Exteriors, we've thought of everything.